Luke chapter 24, uh, verses 13, I think through 35. Uh, and basically, uh, it's the story of the Emmaus Road. Uh, um, the journey of two men on their way uh, to uh, Emmaus. And uh, about a seven mile trek, took about two hours. And, and on the way home, uh, they are joined by a stranger. Uh, that they do not know, the Bible says they're prevented from knowing who that person is. But I think the thing that is important about this, uh, more so than anything else, is the fact that what people miss is this is the a post-resurrection account uh, of Jesus and uh, his encounter with these disciples. What is important is that you're beginning to see a transition, in my mind, from the pre resurrection ministry of Jesus to the post-resurrection ministry of Jesus. And what will ministry be like without Jesus being physically in charge of all that is going on? I mean, these disciples are obviously uh, depressed. Uh, they obviously are discouraged. Uh, they obviously have been uh, disrupted because they say we had hoped uh, that this Jesus would be the one uh, that would uh, set Israel on a whole new course. And now he's gone, so what do we do? And uh, Jesus uh, then begins to enter into dialogue and conversation. And why I make this differentiation between pre-resurrection uh, and post-resurrection is that I really believe what uh, the disciples were wrestling with is do we continue uh, with the Christian movement or do we abandon it now that Jesus is gone? And of course, they also tell Jesus about uh, the, uh, the reported CNN um, report of uh, resurrection. And Jesus acts as if he doesn't know anything at all about this at all. And, and after they get through, Jesus says, oh, you, you, you really, that's a shame that you really don't understand the scriptures. Because if you really understood the scriptures, then you would know that this Jesus would have to go through all of this. And he begins to explain that to him. And so in the midst of trying to make up the mass, what do we do, you know, do uh, now that he's gone? Uh, Jesus uh, invariably kind of helps us to understand without his physical presence, there is still ministry that needs to be done differently because notice here um, that this whole thing is set in the context of movement. They are walking, walking on their way to Emmaus, but notice what Jesus does. The scripture says he draws near, which means if we're gonna do ministry, we have to be willing to get near people. We need to be in relationship with people today. We cannot do ministry uh, in this kind of way in which we put barriers between ourselves and folk. All we do this ministry simply from the pulpit and do it as a ministry of one person speaking and everybody kind of just listening without us investing ourselves in their lives. And Jesus does that. He invests himself in his life of these two disciples who walk. And then rather than show them, which is interesting, that he doesn't show them the nail prints in his hands, nor the wound in his side like he does Thomas later on, but he opens to them the scriptures. That's because Jesus understands something you and I have to learn to understand, and that is that if ministry is to be effective, we have to understand the context in which we are doing ministry. Jesus is talking to two Jewish persons, and he knows that the dominant authority for Jewish people is the scriptures. And so he takes them back to the scriptures and begins to show them that the scriptures speak to their concerns. If we want to deal with this new generation, each generation, each condition, any circumstance, any context you're in, you need to learn what is the dominant authority. What is it that they, are, that they relate to if you're going to relate to them about your experience in Jesus Christ? And that's what Jesus does, and he points them to the scriptures. So much so that they don't even want to leave. They don't want him to leave because he, he attempts to walk away, and they say, now come and, and eat with us. And the interesting thing about this eating is that the scripture says as he broke the bread, then they recognized who he was. In other words, once he fellowshiped with them, once he became a part of their lives, they knew him for who he was. Now, what does that say to you and me? That if we're truly going to do ministry, we have to open ourselves up and fellowship with people where they will get to know who we are and we have to risk getting close, close 
to people and we cannot do church any longer at a distance from people. We have to be willing uh, to get close to folk. Um, that's what that, it's about the church understanding and knowing that we play a pivotal role uh, in the ministry uh, after Jesus' resurrection and you and I are called to get involved uh, in their lives and their context dictates ministry in more ways than you and I ever, ever dreamed and we've got to spend time getting to know people, getting to know the setting, the circumstances and getting to know how to communicate with people the message of Jesus Christ in a language they can understand and uh, can appreciate and feel affirm. That's what you got to do. If you truly love the Lord, <laughs> you got to be willing to do all of, of those things. Uh, this is Bishop James Fawson, just trying to help you to understand that you and I, as Christians, we are on a journey. We are on the way, and as a part of that, we've got to learn how to do ministry in in ways that are not comfortable. It's sort of like, as a friend of mine said, it's like building a bridge while you're walking on it. Uh, but the Lord is going to be with us in the midst of that. But it's for me and it's for you to do that ministry. God bless you. Bishop Swanson saying uh, to you, let's get on the journey and let's do God's business. <laughs>